Hi everybody, my name is Gershley Karen Pierre and I'm pro-marriage and I'm pro the nuclear family and today I want to talk about the scripture in the Bible that says remember when I brought you out of Egypt because I want to formulate that specific scripture to the black collective, to the black family, to black unity. I believe there's so much that we can learn from that specific phrasing. So that's going to be the theme of this dialogue. And I really like this information, by the way, because I don't think we've ever thought of it like this. And that is the concept of remember when I brought you out of Egypt. Why is it important that we remember? What does it even mean to remember? Because in my viewpoint, remembrance, when I used to think of it, that is, it would just make me think of the past. But I think on a multi-layered way, remembrance is deeper than that. When God told his people, remember when I brought you out of Egypt, that context in that story was what they went through. They went through enslavement for hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of years and God brought them out of that. But if you have to remember how God brought you out, I'm sure you also have to remember what you were doing before you came in as well as what things were like when you were in enslavement. My viewpoint, remembrance is not just recollecting the past. I believe it's to hold to the forefront of our minds. And I also believe we remember so that we don't forget. We remember so that we do not forget. Think about it this way. Whenever your cognitive capacities cause you to fail to remember something, it's clinically diagnosed as an impairment, as an illness, as a disorder. So there could be a name for it. Maybe someone suffered a concussion. Maybe someone has Alzheimer's. Maybe they have dementia. Whatever the reason is that your cognitive capacity to retain information, it's not seen as a good thing. It's seen as a sign of declining health, compromised health. So why is it that when it comes to the capacity to retain information in the form of remembrance, why is it that this world will tell us to forget our past? Is that not an impairment? Is that not a disorder? To forget my own past? Then how do I contextualize my present? And what is my catalyst for the future? So I believe that remembrance is the ability to retain information, to recollect your past, you don't want to forget because forgetting is an impairment and it helps you position yourself in the framework of your past to your present to your future. So when people say forget, 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 why? What do you gain if I forget? The person that forgets whatever it is around them, they have an impairment. They are sick. We do not need to validate the idea of being sick. Because the scripture says if the head is sick, then the whole body is sick. I don't want to be sick. So I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget if the things of my past could actually cognitively benefit me to know. I don't want to forget because I want to be more sane. And you know what I've noticed? The world will tell you to forget your past. But they will hold certain aspects of you against you. So they clearly remember me when I do something bad. But I can't remember you when you've done something bad. Never mind the fact that the world will tell you to forget. They won't forget their own. So are you going to forget your past too when it came to the good? Never mind the fact 
that the world will tell you to forget, but they'll tell you you're a K word. They'll tell you you're an N word. They'll tell you you're, and I'll just say the words so that we don't forget, shall we? They'll call you a nigger. They'll call you in a bead. They'll call you blick. They'll call you Kaffir, tar baby, and all these other names. But I have to remember that for me. So in other words, you're designating that as my identity and I have to recall that. But I can't know other aspects like, oh, you know, that our people invented a lot of things. That they were actually, they rebelled against a lot of things, revolted against a lot of things. You want me to not put that to the forefront of my mind, which is remembering? Because I got to put to the forefront of my mind these things. You know why another reason we don't forget? So that you don't tell me who I am. And so that what you tell me doesn't have to deviate from who God told me who I am. Because if you let the world tell you who you are, they'll tell you you're everything but a child of God. That's why I need to contextually know who I am. That's why remembrance is important. Because I don't want you telling me who I am. And, the script, and, and, and Malcolm X, he said, you don't want your enemies to teach you. So if you conceive me in your head in the sick ways that you choose to think of me as, and it's always that I'm the bad person, I'm a thug, and I'm all these other terms, then why would you tell me who I am? You're causing me to remember, in other words, hold to my the forefront of my mind who I am from your angle. But what if I want to know who I am from mine? What if I want... To know who I am, the way God told me to remember. So when he said, remember when I brought you out of Egypt, notice that he said, brought you out of Egypt. So also know when I liberated you, in other words. So you don't want me to remember the times in my history that were actually liberating? You don't want me to be liberated and constantly having to feed on the things that my people have done for the good that I can actually be proud of? Why? Why can't we remember that? When they don't teach us this stuff in curriculums, there's a lot of knowledge about us, by the way, that is not being taught. Why don't you want me to know that? Because did you know if you don't teach it, I'm not going to remember it. I'm not going to know it. It's essentially like I forgot it. Because when we're talking in the spiritual realm, terms like remembrance, terms like forget, aren't what they mean in the physical. In the physical realm, when you forget something, you had to know it in order for it to be forgotten. But in the spiritual realm, because you're not the only thing that ever existed throughout time, time pre-existed you, to forget something is to not come into the knowledge of something that existed before you, that exists around you. So me simply not knowing something is there is forgetting it, spiritually speaking. And so you want me to forget a lot of things because you're not teaching it. We don't get to take classes on it. So how am I going to know? They don't want you to remember. That's why. Ask yourself the question. Ask. Why don't you want me to remember? What's your motive? What do you get out of me forgetting? What's your... What motivates this frame of thinking? Forget, forget. When the Lord himself will tell me to remember, you tell me to forget. And if you say, well, the Lord was saying that to a context, then what's the whole Bible about? From Genesis to Revelation, it seems like it was written a long time ago. And I'm, that's the whole point of the scripture, to record something and to remember it. So how am I not supposed to remember when that's the whole point of my whole belief system? And then also, didn't he tell the prophets a lot of different things and they wrote it down? That's speaking about remembrance. But everything about black people, we have to forget it. And don't you notice the term forget about it? Forget about it is an, another way of saying don't think about it. And if we use that context to describe us, don't you notice we don't think about most things that talk about us? So let's say you want to talk about melanin. Forget about it. 
because we're all human anyway. If you want to talk about the beauty of Afro hair, forget about it because all hair is beautiful. Don't you notice there's always a counter to when we try to now remember ourselves. So not only are things not being taught to us, we're actively told to forget about things. And then we're also being countered when we are trying to be liberated and to be reminding ourselves of what actually is good. But nobody ever counters us when we're in that self-hate thing. When you got the black man bashing the black women, nobody ever counters that. When you've got, you know, black people fighting against the colors, nobody counters that. The different cultures, that. Nah. But once we start getting into certain conversations, you know, forget about it. You know why I know you're telling me to forget? Because whenever you have a talking point that's trying to deviate from what I'm trying to do, you're telling me to forget. You're bringing something else up so I don't even have to remember the other stuff. These things that could otherwise help you strategize. These things that could otherwise help you gain wisdom. And the Bible does talk about wisdom being ideal. These things that could otherwise help you unite and form true bonds were always countered. The forget about it syndrome. And even if it's not directly said, forget about it, it's said in a way that counters the possibility of remembering anything else. It seems to me this world is trying to make us forget. Meanwhile, God in all of his capacities is about remembrance. When you forget who you are, when you forget the truth about yourself, and then other things are then put to the forefront of your mind, you can only be that image. So it's the idea of uprooting so that you can be replanted in a different kind of pot. And if I'm uprooted, then whatever the new context is that I'm planted in becomes my identity. You see how that works? We're being recontextualized. You know what else is another form of remembrance that I notice? I notice that media never shows black families. It's like they're trying to make us forget that we should create these families. I also noticed the media puts a lot of money into certain images so that we don't get to see true intact families. How can I remember the black family if I don't get to see it? You want me to constantly forget. And I want to say something about the past when it comes to the black family. Did you know they had a lot of intact families in history? So there is um, a town referred to as Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the United States. That town, unfortunately, was besieged as the Bible calls, when you ransack a place, burn it down and, and scatter the people, that's called besiegement. That town was besieged and everything those people worked for just was destroyed. They had businesses, black businesses. We always talk about black businesses. They had black businesses in those places. They had banks. And I'm paraphrasing the research because I did see a documentary on the subject. But did you know their banks would loan to those people who oppressed them? Whoa. What if I didn't remember that because I didn't, I wasn't able to see it be documented. It was never written down. God forbid. But also... 
What would that tell me about the state of us today? That they had all that. And I'm looking at them like they're the past and I'm supposedly the future. How am I the future? When I'm devolving and they were way, way more evolved. They had more black businesses than us. More black families than us. More black unity than us. More safety than us. More community than us. They, are we in the past or are they in the past? I, I have to know. But you see, if we remember that, what that link is, whatever that is that makes them somehow better off than us today, and we expanded on that link, how, how much more can we rise? We forgot. In other words, we didn't hold to the forefront of our mind. We didn't hold sacred. We didn't for the sake of not having to put to the back of us, not having to forget the black family. We forgot the black family. We forgot the virtues of black empowerment. They had it in their mind. And there were hundreds more cities, not just Tulsa, that also were besieged. And that's another dialogue, by the way, which they don't teach us. I don't remember finding that out until college. And I had to take a special class just to find that out. It was a part of my uh, a sociology class that I took. I didn't learn that in, in K through 12. I guess that just wasn't a necessity. What is it about this world? They don't want us to remember. Let's talk about forgetting the black family. Let's talk about certain dialogue in the black family. So how do we not remember how the black family helped us historically? It helped our children. I'm sure that if God forbid, and I thank God they didn't have to do that at the high rates that we do today. But if they were in the extreme oppression they were in, and it was just women and children, like you see today, I don't think I would be happy about that. Because when you research the psychological benefits to having a father in the home, those children needed that counter narrative. The world was already anti them to an extreme level. So they needed to see some iteration of black value. They needed to see some sense of hope. And I believe their family was that refuge. And I don't know what their conversations were back in those days, but it must have been nice to have the family with them that they could talk to about the difficulties they faced in this world and among other families that looked like them. But when we forget things, it doesn't give us any parameter of context. So yeah, I think somewhere in the translation, we forgot the black family. We got to get to the point where we contextually and purposely try to remember the black family. It should never go extinct because it never benefited us when it did. So when people who are anti-marriage forget the black family and they'll say, oh, well, marriage is a piece of paper. Well, history shows me that pieces of paper are actually a good thing. Uh, they document time and space from whatever the time period was. But also the fact that our children are not benefiting from broken homes and that's statistically apparent. Remember the data. Remember the science. Remember the information. This is what the world should be, in my viewpoint. A world of remembrance. Hold sacred the things that count information-wise. It needs to be this thing where you have a bunch of intact Black families teaching us about our history, teaching us about what role we play in this world, we need to hold this information dear to us. And what we also need to do, other than being taught about our history and all that, is teaching the science, teaching about those who actually are experts, they understand on a scholarly level the things happening, we need to teach our children about people who've taken their time and they understand in a way more clarifying way this world. Doctors, Neely Fuller Jr., doctors, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, 
they need to be taught those people. They, they need to be taught a lot of people, actually. A lot. A lot of the people that are demonized today are conveniently, they weren't even anywhere near hostile. And yet you've got groups. If you do the research, you'll know that there are many, many, many groups that are not associated or even talked about in the public eye. Why? Because you don't want to bring to the forefront of our minds those things. But we're supposed to um, forget ourselves. Why? So that the narrative is that you're always just the wicked people. And eventually the bait and switch is going to happen. The world is going to attempt to do a bait and switch. They're going to make you look like you were the bad ones all throughout time and, and they were just protecting themselves. This is why import, it's important to remember. We need a world with intact black families. We need a world with intact black families raising their people in remembrance. Not just remembering the past, but remembering all things that are relevant to us in empowerment's sake and even our flaws so that we can rise against those flaws. We need to get to the point where we are rising upon empowerment dialogue and we need to become collectivist. We need to rebuild the black family. We need to see the importance of the black family. We need to dialogue the black family. We need to unite black families. We need to unite the entire collective globally. We will get there. It is biblical. It is promised. I have seen it in the visions that the Lord has sent me and I thank God for that. So I know that it's going to happen. And I thank God that it is. The dialogue is getting ready to change. And guess what? It leads to the prophecy that the Bible says. And they will remember themselves in the lands of their captivity. So how did you think we were going to get to that, huh? You think by forgetting we would get to that prophecy? No. God is going to bring to remembrance the truth. God said to Abraham... Know for a surety that thy seed shall be, in a, be a stranger in a land that is not their own. And there they will be afflicted for 400 years. And after that, the nation whom they served will I judge. And then they shall leave with great substance. That was a prophecy God told to Abraham. He said, no for a surety. So how can I remember something if I don't know it? The Bible says we will remember ourselves in the lands of our captivity. So there's got to be something that's going to happen that's going to cause us to know this information. But even though the world doesn't want us to know this, you will have to know it because it's written. How are they going to stop God's prophecy? Keep your eye on that. This is what I believe based on what God has revealed to me through his own word. So it's not something I should believe only. We all should understand this. And even though I've received visions, I would never share most of them because I'm not God. And the Bible says to test the spirits to see if they are of God. If it does not go according to his word, I have no reason to share it. If I'm wrong personally, I'd rather be wrong. But I'm not going to share things that's between me and God. But let's just say there is a time coming where people are going to know the information of us. That's going to influence us because it's going to make us actually finally wake up and we are going to increase in families. And I also want to say this. There is a time coming that is not ideal. And don't talk about, but we're in 2020, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't matter. But that stated, let us remember the black family. Let us remember ourselves. Let us remember our purpose. Let us not forget the black family. The black family was never meant to be forgotten. And it's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. We are awakening. This is the era to awaken. 
This is the era to awaken. This is the era to awaken. This is the era to awaken. This is the era to awaken. This is the time. You will know. So I won't look like the crazy person. But if you want to discard me as the crazy person, you know, this person is a blasphemer. She believes that the black people are the Israelites. Wow, that's blasphemy. She believes that God is going to awaken them in the, quote, lands of their captivity. That's blasphemy. She believes that God told her at the age of 16. That's blasphemy. She believes that people should remember the black family. That's blasphemy. She believes that black people need to be more empowered. That's blasphemy. She believes that black people need to unite. That's blasphemy. She needs to believe. She believes that black people need to awaken. That's blasphemy. And also, I noticed that everything about black is seen as blasphemy. Everything. The word black is seen as a bad thing. The word darkness, when people say, oh, the darkness, they connote it as a bad thing. So everything about us, even so much as us recollecting ourselves or even focusing on our issues, that's a bad thing. So anytime someone has anything good to say about us, consider it bad. So I perceive this information as being seen as bad. Well, woe to them that call good evil and evil good. You're the evil ones for calling us the evil ones for existing as who God designed us to be. That is all I have. Let's remember the black family. I'm pro-marriage and I'm pro-unity and I'm pro-community and I'm pro the nuclear family and I'm pro-black and I'm Gershley Karen Pierre. And I'm a child of the King of Kings. And hallelujah, Lord, I just pray you'll let this message come through in Jesus' mighty name. Stay tuned for more.